This will be kind of fun to do. I love doing these uh, typically at school, sometimes at home, um, but this is definitely a technological uh, nightmare for some of us trying to get all the moving parts together. But I'll kick off this week and we're gonna try to do this every day for the next couple of weeks. My goal was to do this outside today, but as you know, it's been a rainy, cold, drizzly, misty day, but what a better topic than to talk about clouds because we got a ton of them out there. Now, how clouds form, and one of the ways that clouds form is through lower pressure. Now, when we take moisture near the ground and we lift it up into the atmosphere, the pressure goes down because there's literally less air pushing down on us. So the air expands, it cools, condenses, and forms a cloud. So I always like to start off talking about clouds by doing my cloud in the bottle. Um, I won't call it a trick, we'll call it an experiment. So here is a bottle, I've got a liquid in there. Um, that liquid is vaporizing in there. You can't see it, right? Because it's clear in there, but just like water vapor in our atmosphere, there's water vapor and water molecules all around us. They're just so spread out and tiny that we don't see them. If you were to smoosh them all together, you could condense them into a cloud. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this bottle, I'm gonna take my pump, and this should be fun trying to do this on camera. So I might actually stand up when I'm doing this. I'm gonna take my pump. I'm going to hook it up to the top here. And I might have to stand up for this. So I'm gonna stand up and I'm gonna pump up this bottle. So you guys see the bottle here. Actually, I'll do it back here on my, um, on my shelf. It might be easier to see. So we'll do it back here. I'm gonna pump it up. I'm gonna try to get as much air in here as we can. I'm pumping this bottle up right now, full of air. We're creating high pressure inside this bottle. And then watch this. This is gonna be the coolest part of the whole thing. Oh, it didn't work, so we'll have to do it again. That's the thing about these experiments. Sometimes they don't always work. I'm actually gonna do it on my chair. It might be easier, there we go. So I gotta pump this up and create high pressure in there. I'm gonna shake it up one more time just so we got a good little amount of vapor in there. Pump it up as hard as I can. It's a good workout too, at home workout, pumping these things up. Oh, it's leaking air somewhere, let me see. There we go. I think it's getting in there. Oh, now we're getting in. All right, we're getting there. Ooh, it's getting hard to pump. I know it's getting full now. Ooh, it is rock hard. Okay, you guys ready? Here we go. So when I opened the bottle, the air expanded, everything cooled rapidly, and we got a cloud. I actually pump it out. So yeah, a little workout for me. We created a cloud in a bottle by pumping it up with air. Here's the cool thing. One of my uh, demonstrations about doing high pressures, if I pump air back in here, I'll put it back here. It actually disappears. So that was a little harder to do than I expected sitting right here. But today's topic, is clouds and so we made one in a bottle so let me show you how clouds form i'll catch my breath here didn't know i was going to get a workout today so we know there's water molecules in the atmosphere right they're all over the place they need to find something to condense onto now the cool thing about condensation nuclei is that condensation nuclei could be salt dust dirt anything in the atmosphere. This is why when airplanes travel at high altitudes, they form contrails because the water molecules go over the cloud, over the, the plane, they meet up in the back and they have some soot basically from the engines of the plane to condense on and they form clouds. And that's why we need condensation nuclei. Now, altitude's important, just like my bottle here, showing you as you go up in the atmosphere, the pressure goes down and the temperature gets cooler. You can condense clouds or water into clouds as well that temperature is really crucial to getting those clouds to form. Now, just to show you some of the different types of clouds, I'm gonna move this to full screen here. So here's your type of clouds. You've got cirriform, which are really high level clouds. Those are those wispy cirrus 
looking clouds that are kind of look like ice crystals. Cumuliform, which is a, a type of uh, cloud that I love. It's puffy, looks like a, a cotton ball. I usually joke the cotton ball clouds. Um, then stratiform is what we have today, but we have a form of stratiform, nimbostratus today, which is a rain producing cloud. So you can see nimbostratus combines two of the cloud types together. That's the type of cloud we have today outside. So uh, any kind of cloud that has nimbo in it is usually a rain cloud. So we have cumulonimbus, we have nimbostratus, we have cumulonimbus, um, we have seronimbus. We've got a lot of different kinds of nimbus clouds, which are pretty cool. But here's the basic 10 that I'll show you. Here's the cirrus. Yesterday we had some of these beautiful. Um, these cirrus clouds are gorgeous. Uh, they're made of ice crystals, usually up there about the level where planes fly, 25, 30,000 feet, sometimes as low as 15,000 feet. Then we have cirrocumulus, um, which is a cumulus cirrus kind of combination. Cirrostratus, which is a cirrus cloud um, that is kind of layered. The thing about stratus means layering. So all these are high level clouds that you would typically see um, around here and you can see the cirrus clouds come in a couple different forms. Mid-level clouds, alto cumulus. So anything with alto typically means mid-level. Alto stratus, which we've got some of that today, and nimbo stratus. We were just talking about this today. That's what the cloud that's over us right now, that cloud right there. Low-level clouds, we have cumulus. There's our puffy cloud. We've got the cumulonimbus, which is your thunderstorm cloud. This is the biggest cloud there is because it goes from the bottom of the atmosphere all the way to the top. In fact, there will be cirrus outflow coming off the top, uh, cumulus clouds down here, and even some, some nimbo stratus mixed in. So this sometimes has a little bit of everything. Stratocumulus, which is a really cool cloud. We get those um, sometimes when we have, sometimes referred to as a mackerel sky at night. Um, definitely can tell you a lot about the weather coming up as well. Stratus, uh, we've got a ton of that today. Layered clouds, fog is a form of stratus, low level uh, clouds. That's the kind of stratus clouds we're talking about. And what I want you guys to do today um, after we talk about these is I'm going to give you guys a, kind of a homework assignment, something you guys can do at home that is really, really cool. I actually did this here at my house. Um, since we talked about clouds today, I'm going to show I'm going to put the PDF in the comments uh, of our stream here is I printed out this chart which you can see on your screen. And I'm gonna put this PDF in there. So parents, this is what it looks like. It's a PDF of all the cloud types. Um, goes over all the high, mid-level, and low-level clouds, but it also goes over some basics of fronts as well as jet streams and where to look for these things to form. But the cool thing about this project right here, and we'll come back on camera, is that I want you guys either to print these out or put this on a tablet, and over the next couple of weeks, I want you to see how many of those clouds you can identify. So you see them all there? I like to call this the Pokemon cloud card. So every day you go outside, you know, since we're gonna be spending a lot of time at home, find every single one of these clouds, and when you see one that you identify correctly, take your pen and check it off. If you want, you can actually cut these out as cards and collect them, and maybe you guys can trade them, and then every time you see one of those clouds. So the goal is to try to check them all off. Now there's some really cool ones on here. Um, I'm gonna show you some of the ones that are on here. I'm gonna turn around to our other cloud chart here. Um, some of the cool ones on here are the Cirro Stratus with the halo. That one is really cool. Um, lenticular clouds, um, which is a form of uh, alto cumulus that forms in the mountains mainly. If you ever see one of those, it's really cool. And one of the clouds we see quite a bit during severe weather season when we have thunderstorms uh, during the summer is the shelf cloud. This is the cloud right here, which is, I like to call it the SLC, scary looking cloud. Um, a lot of folks see that and think really bad weather, but this usually is strong outflow from a thunderstorm. A wall cloud is a form of a cloud that forms before a tornado. Uh, Mamatis clouds, beautiful Mamatis clouds. Love Mamatis clouds. Um, sometimes you'll see those with the cumulonimbus clouds on the base of the anvil. But there's some really cool ones here. So some of these are really tough to see. You may not see these in the next couple of weeks, but it's a great project to have to go outside 
Um, give your give yourself, uh, you know, maybe the next two weeks as we're stuck at home, maybe three weeks, depending how long, how much longer this goes, to see how many of these you can collect. So it could be a daily activity. The other thing you can do to um, talk about the weather on a daily basis is keep track of the weather. You don't really need a lot of instruments to go outside and just take an observation. Your eye is one of the best instruments you have. Hope you guys are doing well. And remember, kids, stay on it. Weather is an amazing thing. It's so cool to study weather because it's something you can actually apply, just not something in a book. You can go outside and get out there and observe what's going on. Remember, keep looking up. That's the great thing about cloud spotting is that it gives you a chance to go outside and look up.